They call it the 2023 ASUS Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14. In this video, let's unbox it. Now this is the model with the Ryzen 9 7940HS. That's a new SKU. I've got to get used to these new SKUs from AMD. And it also has the 8 gig VRAM card. Now this is the RTX 4060. Now it does come in a 4070 as well, but this is the more affordable model, which is around the $1,500 price point, which is most comparable to one of my favorite laptops last year, which was the G14 at the $1,649 price point. Now they may still be on sale. So if you want to check it out, head down in the links in the description below, and they've been blowing out those G14s for around $1,000. Absolutely insane price points. So I'll link links for the newest one and last year's model if you want to check it out. Now, so far the packaging looks about the exact same. Let's go on ahead, get this bad boy opened up, and everything is looking the same so far even the interior of the box. So what we're seeing is a GPU and CPU upgrade for this year's model. And I can't wait to test the full benchmarks. Keep an eye out on the channel for the one week later review and the full review, all of it will be coming your way. Same nice thin and light laptop weight and thickness will come up on the screen so you can see that there. This thing still looks great. The emblem here looks different this year. So last year it was a purple emblem. This year it does have a little bit of that purple on the angle that you put it on, but as a whole it was a purple emblem. This is a silver emblem that takes on a purple hue. It's an iridescent uh, coating on that, but it's actually more of a silver, which is a really interesting choice and just a slight change this year. Now going ahead and checking out the charger block, we should have the standard 240 watt charger block from Asus. There it is. And uh, it's small compared to the Lenovo Legion Pro 5 and Pro 5 i 300 watt charger block. So that's nice. And then of course you have your instruction manuals right there in that box, but I'm not gonna fuss with those. I'm gonna leave those in the box. Over the past few years, my wife has had her personal information stolen and accounts open without her approval. A while back, we found some of these accounts and took action to eliminate these issues. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. We've been using Aura to monitor our personal information online for over a year now and have been able to reclaim control of our personal data. Aura will identify data brokers that are exposing your information and automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf. Anyone can find anything on the internet, including your full legal name, your personal email, your home address, phone number, and even your relatives. This information is accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to robocallers, telemarketers, spammers, and anyone else that wants to learn more about you. Aura will even opt you out of junk mail and telemarketing lists. You can use my link by going to aura.com slash Kaiser to try a two-week free trial to see how many data brokers are sharing your information. Aura's app also features a VPN, password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitor, internet parental controls, and protects your devices from malware. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll ever need, all inside one app. Let Aura do the hard work of keeping you safe online. If you sign up right now, Aura will give you a two-week free trial with my link in the video description. You'll be shocked at how much of your private information Aura finds exposed over those two weeks. It's quite frightening actually. Aura.com slash Benji Kaiser or scan the QR code on the screen right now. I think you'll be very happy with the protection that you receive and the level of comfort that you get by using Aura. We have been extremely happy using it for over a year and I definitely recommend it. All right, let's go ahead and pull that wrapper off. Like I said, it looks the exact same from a design standpoint. We have the aluminum insert. This is a magnesium alloy chassis pull that piece of fabric out. And then of course you have the screws here to go ahead and pull the, pull the bottom cover off. Now we're gonna pull the bottom cover off later in the video. And we're gonna check out the upgrade path to see if anything has changed as far as the upgrade path is concerned. Now, one thing I always like to check is the assembly. They did really well on the assembly again this year. You can see the bottom cover fits into the side panel very nicely. Good assembly from Asus. They're really doing great work on these laptops. And you can see along the side panel and then along the back panel as well. Everything looks really nice. Now let's go ahead and check out the tap test. One thing I really like about these Asus laptops is they don't have 
that really chintzy hollow sound. They have really good build materials with good assembly. So nice build quality and build materials. Now going ahead and taking a look at the port, you can see that we have a micro SD card reader, a USB type C, two USB type A's, as well as your HDMI, another USB type A and your headphone jack. So no differences in the ports from 2022 to 2023, same port selection, same silly micro SD card reader. I know some love it, some hate it. I personally hate it. I wish it was a full size SD card reader. Now going ahead and taking a look at the open and close test, how easy it is to, to open with one hand on the Asus Zephyrus G14. Opens easily and closes easily with one hand. Got the ergo lift. Lifting the chassis off of the desk to get some nice airflow through there. Hopefully keep this laptop cooler than last year's model. That's one thing I didn't like about the 2023 model is it ran hot compared to some other laptops that had equal performance. So I'm hoping that we see some better cooling out of these 7000 series CPUs as well as the RTX. Now RTX was the decision in the G14. A lot of rumors as to why that was as we're checking out the keyboard deck here, kind of a nice matte finish with actually an iridescence on the uh, keyboard deck material. The keys last year were iridescent. It looks like the keys are no longer iridescent, but the actual deck is iridescent, which is a nice little change. So I do like that. It's just a nice, you know, head nod at some design that they've done. The stickers were put on very straight. That is really impressive, actually, wow. Straight sticker placement. Um, and then of course the same large glass trackpad. Now, one thing I was mentioning was why they decided to go with Nvidia. Now, rumor has it that AMD is really behind this year from a production standpoint. I was shocked to see the AMD CPUs out this early. I kept thinking they were gonna come out late spring or early summer, and we're seeing them come out early spring, Q2. So I was really happy to see that, but clearly they were having troubles producing their GPUs. And so we have an RTX Nvidia GPU inside of this laptop. That's just like my guesstimation because this laptop did so well last year with Radeon and Radeon, especially for 3D modelers. So this might not be the 3D modeling laptop for you. We'll find out on the full benchmarks. Definitely keep an eye out on the channel and subscribe so you don't miss that. But I'm gonna put the 2022 versus the 2023 to see maybe you should actually buy last year's model if if you're in 3D modeling, we will have to find out, especially SolidWorks. All right, let's see if we have enough battery power to turn this on. That battery button clicked much better than the version I tested last year. Last year, I had a weird clickiness in the button and that button turned on uh, with a nice firm click. It didn't have like a snap to it. It just had a nice soft touch click on. Now, as we're powering up the laptop, you can see we have the same screen, 14 inch 16 by 10 aspect ratio. I really like this for a thin and light on the go laptop with a small form factor. The 16 by 10 aspect ratio really makes a big difference to giving you more screen real estate. Same keyboard setup, like I said, full size shift key, enter key, page up, page down. I like the placement on these. Sometimes they shrink them in between keys and it just annoys me. I wanna be able to see where my up and down and side to side arrow keys are. Quick access to fan control, print screen, brightness, and of course, jump into your Asus Armory Crate Command Center. Now the speakers are still up on the top of the keyboard deck. That is great. Two years ago, the speakers were down here and when your palms would rest on the keyboard, it would go ahead and muffle the speaker quality and whatever audio you were listening to. So I'm glad they've kept those up there. That's a really good move, not moving those back down and uh, creating a poor audio experience. 2023 Asus Zephyrus G14 has one really annoying problem that I discovered while running my unboxing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up. So you can hear that right there. Now when I rest my palms on the top cover, which is not abnormal to do, it rattles against either the keyboard deck or the bottom cover. Now I can solve this problem by going ahead and just sticking a little uh, coaster in there from Grove Made. But that is an issue. Now, let me know if you have the Asus Zephyrus G14, are you having the same fan rattle noise issue? Because so far in the model I have, it's an issue. Now when the fan's off, no big deal. But while the fan's on, it's just normal to rest your palms here on the top of the keyboard deck and it, it increases that rattling sound. There it is. So if I put something under there, it stops. So definitely just the way that it rests on the table that makes it rattle, because pull it out, makes the noise, put it in, stops the noise. So I hope this is just the model I have. Um, but if not, that is, that's an issue. That's so annoying. And it gets louder as I push my finger. I'm definitely pulling the bottom cover off this thing to check out what's going on in just a minute. 
ooh, that would drive me nuts. If I just bought this thing and paid thousand, fifteen hundred dollars for it, I'd be pissed. But I don't want to say that this is every model, but this is the experience I'm having so far. All right, we're here inside the Asus Armory Crate Command Center. We have all the necessary bells and whistles that I was hoping for. We have Ultimate GPU Mode, Standard, and Eco Mode. That's fantastic, as well as Silent Performance and Turbo Mode. So we have everything that we normally had on the previous G14 to give us great control of the fan modes and ultimately get great battery life with that Eco Mode. I'm really hoping we can get those optimized settings with this 7000 series CPU to get great battery life. We'll find out during the full review. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and flip this laptop over, check out the upgrade path and see if we can figure out why that fan is rattling. Now, as I pull the bottom cover off of the Asus Zephyrus G14, you'll see a 76 watt hour battery as well as an unoccupied RAM slot. Now, I would not personally run this laptop with eight gigs of RAM. There's not enough performance ceiling in order to get absolutely everything out of this laptop. It'll be majorly bottlenecking the system. Now, if you're somebody who wants to have this laptop with say 24 or 40 gigs of RAM, let's say you put a 16 gig stick in here or a 32 gig stick in here, then it would make sense to order it with eight gigs of RAM. So you're not wasting money on that extra stick that you're basically just gonna throw away. So it could be a good idea to order the base model, purchase your own RAM stick, pop it in the system and you're good to go. But it was surprising to pull this sheet back and see no RAM stick in the unoccupied slot. Now we do have a occupied M.2 drive here and there's no extra room for another M.2 drive. So you're only gonna have the one M.2 drive which you can swap for this system. Now taking a look at the fans, I see no reason why this would be sticking except for it's like catchy. So I think it might be that this fan is just installed slightly incorrectly. Like here we go, listen to this. So I might go ahead, tweak the screw a little bit here to see if I can either loosen or tighten this to just get it to not catch so much. Let's see what I can do here. Yeah, it must be an air in the fan because it's really catchy. And no matter if I move it around or tweak it, it just, it seems to continue to catch. That's definitely somewhat of a quality control issue that if it were me and I had just purchased this laptop, I would definitely be sending this laptop back to get a new model. Cause that's just not acceptable in my opinion. So I think that's simply a quality control cause on this side, no issues with the fan. So as far as the fan issue is concerned that I've been talking about throughout this video, I believe it is specifically for the model I have before me. I can tell by the catchy fan mechanism over on this side where I have a really nice smooth mechanism on the other side. So this is a model that I'll definitely be sending back, letting them know, hey, you got an issue here. Definitely wanna make sure that this gets repaired. Uh, but a comment below, if anybody else is having the same issue, I'd love to know. Now, I personally never had an issue with an Asus Zephyrus G14, but in the comment section of the 2022 model, I had a lot of people complaining about quality control issues. Issues. Personally, I've never had any, but with any device, you have to be aware that that is a possibility. So just keep that in mind when considering a purchase that you wanna make sure you know who to contact if the model does have any quality control issues so you can resolve them. Now I'll put links in the description below if you're ready to purchase either the 2022 or the 2023 Asus Republic of Gamer Zephyrus G14. And stay tuned for more full review videos of this model. Can't wait to have them coming your way.